Hi there, Renan Joran from Sophist. If you're wondering how sophisticated manufacturers develop new electronic products with low risk and bring them all the way into production, watch this video. As you can see in this graph, there are one, two, three, four, five and then finally six phases right a lot of companies call this one feasibility study call it poc proof of concept evt is engineering validation testing it's basically preparing prototypes and having engineers put them together and usually when tooling is involved for example for the enclosure of the device or for some internal parts it's here in phase four and they call it dvt design validation testing because that's the time when the design elements you know color um, cmf color material and finishing and all the details of the, the appearance of the products are uh, are confirmed and you see the number of pieces made uh, goes up a lot right when you have tooling in place then you you do some uh, very small batches some uh, bunch of shots out of tooling uh, often 10 20 pieces or more just to put it together and make sure it looks good uh, then it goes into uh, pre-production preparation often called pvt um, production validation testing so it's not mass production yet uh, it's still batches often starting let's say uh, 40 50 pieces then uh, then going higher maybe 100 200 pieces and, and more and then once it's clear that on the assembly lines etc etc everything is ready all the the testing stations are ready and so on then we go into mass production mp uh, and then of course the the numbers here are are higher and then it keeps ramping up this process typically is for products that would be made in the hundreds of thousands of pieces, hopefully. Right? So it's very important to be proactive and to, to do all this work. And really the, 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 the objective is that, as I wrote here, from one belt to the next, you have better quality and also better product reliability. Right? That's the, the, the key. All of this you know, validation testing, when you see this validation testing, it means that the, the products made at that point, the, the prototypes, the products made uh, are tested or are reviewed, the processes themselves are reviewed, and then over time, the issues are fixed, right? So if I really summarize quickly, uh, so here, you know, you, you plan, uh, it's the specifications phase, uh, you know, what are the requirements on the product? How is it going to work, you know, uh, conceptually? And then you, you move into uh, to this and you, you start to have renderings of industrial design, you put together a crude, crude prototype, um, maybe, a, a, maybe a lookalike prototype also to, to see what it's going to look like. Uh, and get some user feedback, but also maybe a very crude uh, functional prototype, uh, maybe based on an Arduino, for example, uh, Arduino module or some, some other modules for the main function. All right, this is really to get some feedback to make sure we're on the right track. Then it goes into prototyping, and here what I call Dev1, Dev2. In most cases, there are uh, a number of prototypes involved. It's not something that gets nailed at the first prototype. Uh, but then here, what, what happens? Well, a lot of engineering design work, obviously, uh, on the mechanical side, on the electronic side, maybe uh, firmware design, etc. It's very important to design for manufacturing, right? Uh, D, F, M, and, and design for quality and, and, and for reliability and so on. DFX, they call it. This usually is based on 3d printed parts or cnc machine parts sometimes they use soft tooling 
these 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 uh, first prototypes will be tested for for performance for reliability. It's important to start to have a um, a quality plan and a reliability plan. All right, and at this point in uh, EVT and let's say there's only one EVT. I you know some people call it EVT one, EVT two, EVT three, and so on. But really, in my book, once the product development is 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 confirmed, most of the engineering design uh, has been done, and what what still needs to happen is the adjustments to bring it into mass production. That's where EVT starts, but different companies have different understanding of that. And this is mostly about hardware, right? Software often gets uh, finalized later, but there needs to be at least a plan for some uh, integration and there needs to be something in place already at this point. All right, then in, in what we call the tooling phase, a lot of people call DVT, what happens? Well, the hard tooling is, is fabricated, obviously. Uh, and then from there, some prototypes are made, they, they are tested, uh, they're supposed to have the right physical properties. So a lot of tests can be done to, to confirm. Uh, the the UX user experience of the, the software, you know, integrated with the hardware, is quite important. It needs to be confirmed at this point. Uh, industrial design, um, you know, the industrial designer is still involved, and and give some feedback on the um, on 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 the, the the physical prototypes. The, the the prototypes are typically also sent for uh, compliance testing. And, and uh, often all the way to certifications, all right? Reliability test, uh, it goes from testing to failure. Here it does a switch, is more live testing to actually confirm that it's okay, right? Most of the big improvements are supposed to have been done already at the prototyping phase uh, where the deficiencies of the, 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 the product design were highlighted. Then when it goes into pre-production, PVT, well, there are pilot runs uh, on the assembly line with the components of tooling. Everything is supposed to be basically like in mass production. The testing stations have to be ready. All the software uh, at this point needs to be ready. In many cases, that's not the case. Uh, and it's delaying things. But as much as possible, the, um, the software should be, uh, should be ready, right? A lot of corrective actions. There's a lot of issues that, that still appear, it's normal. And then at one point, you need to say, okay for manufacturing readiness. And then it goes into mass production, where there's you know larger and larger batches. There's still issues that are addressed one by one. People keep looking at the first pass yield, which means the proportion of the products that are good the first time, that do not need, do not need to be reworked, and it needs to, to improve. Uh, there are objectives, of course, for every one of these phases, but uh, maybe that's beyond the scope of this video. But the main uh, objective here for mass production is the, are, are, the main objectives are the pace, you know, how fast you can make it, because cost is important, and uh, first pass yield, how many of these products are good the first time. And then as you ramp up, then you duplicate, maybe you duplicate the tooling, duplicate the lines, etc., to go faster and faster. That's assuming the product is successful in the marketplace. But then in that case, if you have done all of this work ahead of time, then you are in a good position. You have really validated the product design and the process also, the manufacturing process and the, the testing process all throughout this. So you have a product that behaves well and is well received and uh, production costs don't come with very big and pleasant surprises. So that's really the purpose of following this very structured uh, process. All right, I hope that was clear and useful. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.